thank you so much for being here today. Uh, my name is Ryan. I'm the pastor at the chapel, and it truly is an honor to, to be with you and your family uh, today. Uh, my heart breaks for you in this time because death is never an easy thing to go through, no matter who it is. And so we're going to begin today by reading Psalm 71, verses 1 through 6. It says, In you, O Lord, do I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me and rescue me. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be to me a rock of refuge, to which I may continually come. You have given the command to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. Rescue me, O oh my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the grasp of the unjust and cruel man. For you, O oh Lord, are my hope, my trust, O Lord, from my youth. Upon you I have learned from before my birth that you are he who took me from my mother's womb. My praise is continually of you. Today is a day to find refuge in the Lord. Uh, and in that psalm we see we can take refuge in the Lord because he hears our prayers he saves us in the midst of our tribulations and because he is our hope and our trust. All things on this earth will fade away, uh, but hope remains in the Lord. So we're gathered here to remember the life of Darlene. You know her way better than I do, and so I'm excited to hear your memories and your thoughts of Darlene's later in the service. And I want to thank you for being present this morning, but may we not forget that God is also present too. Matthew 28, 20, Jesus said, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And so as hard as today may be, just remember that God is present here as well. He is present and he is our comforter. And so at this time, I'm going to read the, uh, we're going to remember Darlene by reading the obituary that you guys placed uh, into the newspaper. Darlene Thayer Klaus, 76, of Catawba Island, Ohio, passed away Tuesday, March 31st, 2020, at Anchor Lodge, Lorraine, Ohio, surrounded by her loving family. She was born September 20th, 1943, in Clyde, Ohio, the daughter of Glenn and Helen Reimers Thayer. Darlene was employed at Cedar Lane RV Park on Catawba and thoroughly enjoyed working for her wonderful employers, Will and Sarah Moore, who were like family to her. Darlene had many hobbies and could often be found working in her yard, mowing the grass for everyone in the neighborhood or spending time with grandchildren, family and friends. She loved spending time on the islands, being on the water, beach walking and the outdoors. Darlene was an avid fisher woman and had the best perch fry, fish fry gatherings. She was a gentle soul with a giant, generous heart. She will be sorely missed by many. Surviving are her children, Jennifer and Brian Fioretta of St. Dusky, Maria Klaus of Port Clinton, Peter Michael Klaus of Oak Harbor, grandchildren Caitlin Knopf of Tennessee, Caleb Knopf of New Mexico, Paul Knopf of Arkansas, Jordan and Lauren Fioretta of Sandusky, Michaela, Andrew and Marissa Klaus of Oak Harbor, special nieces Michelle Thayer or Terry Thayer Foster of South Carolina, Valerie Thayer of Port Clinton, Nephew Mark Thayer of Clyde, sister-in-law Dolly Thayer of Port Clinton, and longtime special friend Kara Wicks of Marblehead. Former husband Peter Klaus of Sylvania, Ohio, and many dear cousins and friends. She's preceded in death by her parents and by her brother Dennis Thayer and Norman Thayer. Now I take time to read that because it just shows how important family is, right? It shows how important that our closest family members, how, how important they are to our lives. I guarantee that you all meant so much to Darlene, and at the same time, you're here today because she meant so much to you. 
And so it's always good to take a step back and really look at your family and your friends, those that are closest to you. With that, let us pray, and we will continue this service. God, you have given us the greatest gift of family. The gift of those who are closest to us, those that we can rely on and lean into. And we thank you so much for this family right here, that they are here supporting one another in the midst of this grief and this terrible loss. But more importantly, God, we thank you for the love that you have shown us through your son, Jesus. And I pray that your comfort would be here and present in this room. God, I pray that you would make yourself known and that we would all lean in and draw closer to you in the midst of this time. God, death is a, is a great reminder for us that life is not promised to us any day. And so may we live intentionally starting today. God, we love you and we give you all the glory. We pray this in your name. Amen. You may be asking yourself, where do we go from here? Uh, usually at a funeral, that's kind of the question is, well, what's next? Uh, how do we find hope in a seemingly hopeless situation? There's a story in the Bible that I believe that will answer some of those questions for us today. I believe this story will offer hope and also offer comfort in the midst of our loss. In the Gospel of John, John records a story about Jesus' interactions with a man named Lazarus and his two sisters, Mary and Martha. Maybe you know or have heard of this story. John tells us early in the story that Lazarus is someone whom Jesus loved. And he practically considered Lazarus and, his, and Mary and Martha his family. But tragedy struck his family, much like today. Lazarus had died. Martha and Mary are broken and saddened over the loss of their brother, as they should be. And they long for a miracle to take place. So they go to Jesus with their brokenness and their loss. And Jesus responds to both Mary and Martha in two completely different ways. His response to his two sisters who just lost their brother is the same way that he's responding to us today. And so as we listen to, to how he interacts with them, just be reminded that that's exactly how he's interacting with us as well today. Listen to what happens when Mary approaches Jesus in John 11. When Mary arrived and saw Jesus, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if only you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and saw the other people wailing at, with her, a deep anger welled up within him, and he was deeply troubled. They told him, Lord, come and see, where have you put him? He asked. Then Jesus wept. When Mary goes to Jesus in tears over the loss of her brother, Jesus responds with tears too. He enters into Mary's sadness and stands alongside of her, in her grief. And I bring that up because Jesus wants us to know that he is weeping alongside of us today too. As you guys have been grieving the loss of Darlene, God is not distant. Jesus is not far off. He has actually been here and present and he is also grieving with you today. He's entered into our sadness and he's standing alongside of us as we grieve, mourn, and weep. And unfortunately, in times like this, we often believe that we have to remain strong for our family members and our friends. Maybe you feel that today. And so we push down our feelings of loss, but that's not what Jesus wants us to do. His tears that were shed over the loss of his loved one gives us permission to cry and to grieve at the loss of darling too. But did you also notice that Jesus' other response to Mary Jesus was angry and deeply bothered at the loss of Mary's brother. Why does Jesus respond this way? Why does he respond with anger? Well, because Jesus is angry because death was never supposed to be. And when we experience the death of someone that means so much to us, we're never prepared to accept the reality of it. 
The reason that death is so hard is because it never belonged in God's original creation. You see, in the beginning, when God created human beings, there was peace, joy, life, humans flourished, and nothing came between our relationship with God. Yet to the disappointment of God's plan, death entered the world after human beings decided that they didn't need God. Instead of following God's will, people wanted to be the God of their own lives. And so humans forfeited their relationship with God, and as a result, we are confronted with the con consequence of sin, and sin brings death. That is why Jesus is angry and deeply bothered by death. Because it was never supposed to be this way. It was never supposed to be something any of us were to experience. But thankfully, for us, death does not have to be the end of the story. You see, Jesus' weeping and anger was not his only response to death. Instead, he, cho he chose to confront death head on. And this brings us to the other sister, Martha's interaction with Jesus. When Martha approaches Jesus about her brother's death, Jesus does not cry, and he does not get angry. Rather, Jesus tells her what he has done to confront death. This is what Jesus says to Martha. Verse 25, Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live, even after dying. Everyone who lives in me and believes in me will never, ever, will never die. Do you believe this, Martha? What incredible words of hope this is in the midst of such pain and grief. This is the kind of hope that Martha needed in the midst of her brother's death. Jesus says that because of who he is and what he has done for us, those who believe in him will live beyond the grave for eternity. See, Jesus offers Martha and Mary hope in the fact that he came to die in our place and to conquer sin and death itself. Jesus came to die, and he died on a cross. And when he did this, he took upon our sin to show us how God truly loves us. And it's almost Easter. And so after three days, Jesus then rose from the dead. And when he t did this, when he rose from the dead, he defeated sin and triumphed over death forever. And so in the midst of the sting of death, there truly is hope. 1 Corinthians 15 talks about the sting of death. This is where the sting of death is, right? It's in this room. It's present here in your lives and in my life, in the lives of people who are joining us. This is where the sting of death is. But 1 Corinthians 15 says, Oh, death, where is your sting? Or this idea that there is eternity to be had, and that's where death will not have any sting. But yet, Jesus tells us that anyone who believes in him will experience everlasting life. So there is hope. It's hard to see today. But it's so important to see for eternity. And so this story shows us in John that Jesus grieves with us. He's angry at death just like we are today. But that through him, there is hope for eternal life. There is hope for you and for me through Christ. Those are what we need to remember as we continue on remembering Darlene. So at this time, I'm going to go ahead and invite Jenny to come up and share some memories of Fatra. I'm hoping I can get through this. But if I can, my sweet nephew, Andrew, volunteered to finish it for me. Thank you, honey. So those of you who know, being up here in front of you terrifies me because I don't do public speaking. My mom and I had that in common, too. But I felt that it's the least I can do for my mom today. My mom was my best friend. She was the first one I went to for advice or to complain or to laugh about something that had happened that day. She was my confidant. 
She was the one who always understood what I was going through and she always wanted every single detail, no matter how small. She would listen intently, laugh or shake her head or cry with me, but she was always there. She was there for every milestone in my life, every birthday, every holiday, every Black Friday shopping trip. She was the first person I told when I found out I was pregnant with Jordan and again with Lauren. She shared every joy as if it were her own and every heartache or frustration as if it were her own. She felt so deeply and loved so fiercely that there was never any doubt that she loved completely and that her family always came first. She always put others before herself, so much so that at the end she didn't tell us how truly sick she was because she didn't want to burden us or hurt us. So she hid it to protect us. She always put us first. I will forever be grateful for the time I had with her. All the memories that I can carry with me, always. And every time I look into both of my daughter's eyes, I will be reminded of my mom's eyes. There are so many things that will remind me of my mom. Her laugh, her smile that would light up a room, her silliness, but most of all, I will always remember how she stood beside me always. I can't picture my life without my mom. I'll have to learn what that's like. I told my mom during one of her last days that it was okay to go and that I would be okay. And she mouthed the words to me, I hope so. That was one of the last things she said to me, except for, I love you. And I wish I could tell her that I am okay. But I'm not gonna be able to do that for a while yet, Mom. But hopefully someday. Mom, Mima, Grandma, Darlene made such a huge impact on all of our lives and we will all feel the void as big as Lake Erie. But I told her we would take care of each other. I made her that promise. So I'm counting on all of you to help me with that and all to be there for each other. It was what Mima always did for others and us. And it's what she would want for all of her family. My mom was many things. A friend, a mom, a grandma, a Mima, an aunt, a sister-in-law, a daughter, a hard worker, but most of all, mom was a giver. I can only hope to be like my mom, to love so completely and care so deeply and to be loved by everyone she meets because that describes my mom to a T. And I will miss her like none other. I love you forever, Mama.